All right, here's a really good concept problem. Shown is a graph of f prime prime, the second derivative of function f. And the curve is given by this equation. f prime prime is x minus a squared times x minus d. The graph of f has inflection points at which values of x? Okay, here's the answer. An inflection point occurs where the second derivative, f prime prime, changes sign. And that happens at one place, x equals d. And you can see that. This curve goes from negative to positive right at that point. So that's the answer, x equals d. And that's the only place. But this is worth talking about for a minute. Because you can see on this graph, this graph which is the second derivative, you can see two points where the value of the second derivative is 0. Right there at x equals a and x equals d. And you can also see this in the equation. x minus a is a factor and x minus d is a factor. So a and d are zeros of this function, the second derivative. And you can also see that the factor x minus a has a multiplicity of 2. And wherever there is an even multiplicity, the curve touches the graph without crossing it. And x minus d right there has a multiplicity of 1. And wherever the multiplicity is an odd number, the graph crosses the axis. But at both of those points, at x equals a and at x equals d, the second derivative has zeros. Now in your mind, you may associate zeros of the second derivative with inflection points. And that would be correct. If you have a curve, an inflection point is a change in concavity. So suppose you have a cubic curve that looks something like this. At one place, the curve is concave down and at another place the curve is concave up and at some point in there the concavity changes from concave down to concave up and where the concavity is down that would be a negative second derivative and where the concavity is up that would be a positive second derivative and right there at that point at the inflection point the second derivative is zero and this is a common way to find the inflection points, to set the second derivative equal to zero and solve for x. And it is true that at every inflection point, the second derivative will be zero. But the converse of that is not true. Every place where the second derivative is zero is not necessarily an inflection point. I want to show you a quick example of that. Let's imagine a graph that you're probably pretty pretty familiar with, the graph of y equals x to the fourth looks something like this. It looks a lot like a parabola, except it's a little bit flatter down here at the bottom and it gets steeper a little more quickly. Okay, right at this point, right down here, this is the point we're concerned about. x is 0 and y is 0 at that point. Okay, clearly there's no inflection point here. This graph is concave up over here and it's concave up over here. But let's look at the second derivative. If we take the first derivative, that's easy, 4x cubed. And if we take the second derivative, that's also easy, 12x squared. And you can see that at, at x equals 0, y, y prime prime of 0, the second derivative would be 0. So this is a point where the second derivative is 0, and there's no inflection point. So what the point I'm trying to get across is that just because the second derivative is zero, it does not mean that there is an inflection point. And that's what we see in this problem right here. Point A is a place where the second derivative is zero. You can see this is the second derivative, and it's zero right there, and you can see that in the equation as well. But at that point, there's no inflection point. Because the graph of f prime prime simply touches the axis at that point. It does not change sign. So an inflection point occurs where f prime prime changes sign. And that happens at x equals d and x equals d only. So if you want to remember a quick rule for inflection points, inflection points occur where the second derivative changes sign.